there we go. That that way, I'll I'll upload. So, recording is on. Great, great. Welcome to today's uh, GSOC meeting. We have a number of PRs to discuss and questions to answer, including by Sagar. Thank you all for being here. Um, should we should we address Sagar's question first? Actually, that's maybe the best way to go about it. And um, I will. Should I screen? I'll screen share, and we can look. At, is that all right if I screen share your question, Sagar? It's in the gift. Yeah, here. that's good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Good. And okay. can you all see the GSOC? Uh, sync? Yeah. Great. Excellent. So. Uh, Sagar has a question on exp understand. Well, I'll let you phrase it actually. <laughs> Would you like to, Sagar? It's your question. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, I mean, I was that meeting again to understand what Oleg said to me on 13th Gen, where I asked the questions about REST API specification generator. And mm -hmm. uh, the conclusion we had in that, um, he said to me, you have to. Um, try to um, extract the endpoints for the, just start with some small plugin, plugin which is, he said, um, code coverage plugin. And, um, and when I tried um, on how can I um, extract that endpoint, um, even I don't know how to use that plugin, first of all, uh, I, I just first, I mean, to just hand my get dirty, um, I just, um, I came to know that this was a project from 2018 GSOC again, uh, made by one student. I mean, and uh, Shin Yang, something like that. Um, and um, so um, I just posted my questions in that Gitter channel. And I just, um, I'm just currently still trying to figure out how it is working. And uh, I mean, that, um, I mean, there one person said to me, I'm just use this, my, um, um, GitHub link and try to run um, Jenkins using Docker, and uh, so that uh, so first I just learned Docker, which is actually quite amazing, and now I'm running Docker using Jenkins. Um, I mean, yeah, running Jenkins uh, containerized by Docker. Yeah. So, um, but still, um, when I looked into the source code of that plugin, it's I mean, um, I mean, um, I don't have any idea still what to do further on, even though I just. He, uh, even though just Oleg just said to me, okay, Sagar, you have to extract the endpoint, but I don't know actually, I mean, where to research actually. I mean, it's maybe quite unclear to me. It seems, it seems again, uh, confusing. I mean. Um, yeah, so I, so I think it, it seems like there would, be, at least for me, if I were approaching, there'd be a challenge first how do I identify a REST API endpoint inside the Java source code of a particular plugin or of Jenkins, right? So that's, that's one, because I think the if it's going to be an automatic generator, it's got to walk through all of the, the 1700 plugins that are in Jenkins and read their source code and identify, oh, this is a REST API endpoint, and this is a REST API endpoint. And then it's got to identify, and these are the arguments to that endpoint. And in a, in a perfect world, here's the Java doc for that REST API endpoint implementation. Now, now I said perfect world because many of them know Java doc, you know, varied mm -hmm. levels of quality of Java doc. And so, mm -hmm. so that, was, that was what I was assuming is that likewise what you were assuming, Sagar? Uh, yeah, um, in the in the last meeting on Trade Engine, you also said, I mean, we find out, I mean, um, some plugins even don't have exported bean and, and currently we are relying on exported bean to um, get the rest end, endpoints. And even you said, even my friend has a one plugin, I mean, Mark, and even that plugin don't even have exported bean. I mean, right. Right. So, so, so the, the challenge and, and it's, I think it's a, a, an interesting challenge. The challenge is how do we identify a REST API endpoint? And, mm -hmm. and I think that, so, so there's certainly one level of REST API endpoint that, that we can identify from the Jenkins user interface. So, 
would it be okay if I shared my screen and, and illustrate that one that you might use as a first exploration? Okay, this is not even using a plugin. This is just the Jenkins, the Jenkins, Jenkins user interface. But for me, that helps me already see, oh, I might look here and here to see how is that API expressed in the Java source code that I can see from the Jenkins UI. So, so I'm going to share my screen and let's let's take a look at that. Oleg, Oleg would certainly do a better job of this, but we're going to use my inadequate techniques here. So I'm going to go to my Jenkins server. And, and this is just a Jenkins installation that I use. And so if I look at, if I remember right, if I just put slash API on the end of any URL, I get this REST API endpoint. And so already I've got, and if I want to see the, the JSON data, there it is. So, so already at the root level, there is an API endpoint that returns, in this case, it's, it's actually quite helpful. It returns the labels that are available mm -hmm. on agents in my, in my installation, and it returns the description of the, the controller. Oh, shame on me, it's using that word. And, and, and the description there, and, and the list of the top level jobs. So already okay. there's there's something now the, the question then is okay where where what Java code did this execute? So you might say, Gar, turn on your debugger on Jenkins core and exercise this page and watch to see which APIs are actually called to populate assigned labels and to populate jobs and num executors mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm then those things are being discovered somehow. So now the challenge is how are they being discovered? Mm -hmm. And once we know how they're being discovered, that discovery process is the hint, oh, those, that same technique is probably being used to discover things from plugins like, so let's see, that was, that was one example. Let's try, oh, did you have a question before I continue talking? Yeah. So um, you said um, in order to just uh, know, I mean, how actually this thing is working from the Jenkins, I have to put a debugger, but how can, how can I know like where to put a debugger? There are thousands of lines of code. So good, good question. And, and yeah. in, in my case, I would go looking for, so, so again, this is, Oleg, I'm sure would have better better guidance, but we're going to use my my feeble and inadequate skills. Um, so I would look at this string assigned labels and mm -hmm. look for that string in the Jenkins source code, thinking mm -hmm. that okay, it's probably something related to that, and set three or four set breakpoints at various places around that label, trying to find it. So so let's mm -hmm. let's let's take that example and test to see if see if that would actually work. Let's see how many occurrences there are of exactly that string in the Jenkins core. Okay, there are, there's, there are only a relatively few. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so search for string and setting breakpoints looks like it might work at least in that case. Mm, yeah, I mean, just for Jenkins core, maybe who am I and maybe these root stuff, yeah. Oh, right, right. Who am I is a very good example. Yeah, that's that's a very good one because, because when I go to who am I, it presents all sorts of information, interesting, inter oops, I, did I type it wrong? Is it yeah. by capitalized yeah. like that? Yeah. There, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so very good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, but um, mm -hmm. and um, e even though if I understand from where that code is, I mean, which line is executing while running this endpoint, then where I have to put my code in order to um, um, extract that endpoint. I mean, well, and, and that that I think is the next question, right? So, so for me, the mm -hmm. first question was, okay, which what what does an API endpoint look like inside the Jenkins mm -hmm. code? Yeah, right. Yeah, and and exactly. so that was yeah, that was the course. first question. And that's but yeah, that's yeah. certainly not not a conclusion of the questions because once yeah. what does the API endpoint look like? The next question is 
how does Jenkins determine that that thing is an API endpoint? And, and, mm. and it, may be, it may be that we've already got the hint right here. Mm. It may be this line right here. See that index.jelly line that is in, in this? Yeah. This jelly is from Stapler. Is it from Stapler? It is exactly very good. Okay, yeah. so you already know the terminology. Yes, yeah, so so that okay. jelly is processed by stapler, and mm -hmm. and now I'm not sure if if that's the thing that that provides the the REST API or if it is uh, that defines the REST API, not provides it, but defines the entry mm -hmm. point. I would assume it's coming from the Java code. And so I would have assumed, therefore, it's coming from this abstract build class. Mm -hmm. But but again, I could be wrong. And that's that's part of the exploration. Mm, yeah, that's part of the exploration. Now, now, the other is we could probably just ask for Oleg's help on this, schedule some time with him to get, mm -hmm. get some more more one on one time so that he can mm -hmm. assist with a, a quick tutorial. Oh, here's this, here's this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the first question that we currently um, looked into and just, I mean, a possible answer maybe that we looked into just um, look into the files that when we are hitting that endpoint and just put a debugger and explore those files. Maybe, I mean, I get some hints and another possible way is to explore further. Yeah. Right, yeah. So. So I think I think we're also open to a. I can ask to see if we can find some of Oleg's time specifically for this topic, just because it would be a good conversation to have. He might be able to give us in 15 minutes a quick tutorial we could record of. Oh, this is how. Okay, we we saw we saw here are some examples of the endpoints and we found that in the source code, but then how does Jenkins dis decide something should be a REST API endpoint? And he'll probably guide us and say, oh, here are the two or three different ways that Jenkins decides that. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, but um, I remember um, it, on the 13th gen, he also said, I mean, who am I is quite straightforward also. I mean, I don't know, even still, I didn't even explore, but he just said, I mean, it's quite straightforward also. So let's let's take a look at it and let's let's use that one as an example. I think that's a good a good example. So here is and now let's search the source code for it. It was spelled lowercase who okay. It's who am I? Okay, so there are a bunch of tests. Let's look just in or I guess you have to share a screen. Oh, oh, whoops. Yeah, it would help if I shared my screen, wouldn't it? I yeah. talk about what I'm seeing and none of the rest of you can see it. Sorry, that was not very polite. There we go. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mark. So first, okay. let's start from a, so I was thinking, let's look for interesting. Okay, who am I? Okay, so this is Proof that, oh, oh, here we go. Okay, so why did that, why did that earlier search? Grep. Hmm. Huh. Apparently, I don't know how to use git grep, and that's embarrassing because that should have found what I was looking for. So this thing is the who am I implementation, right? So. Mm -hmm. And, and here we see, yeah, so now, yeah, so I think if we were to review that, we would see, yeah, okay, so this has the convenience that it is an exported bean, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so what we had discussed earlier, this one's an exported bean, uh, mm -hmm. that is, if I understand correctly, definitely one way to detect a REST API. However, mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's, I guess it depends on what's best for you in terms of exploration. You could mm -hmm. conceivably say, hey, I'm going to do it just for exported beans initially, and then try mm -hmm. to extract 
extract a sample for an exported bean for exported beans mm -hmm. and see if I can generate the swagger definition of that and look at that to see how does it look that might be you know a, a, a small ex, a small exploration of just exactly one thing now mm -hmm. we you could then say but exported bean bean is certainly necessary but it's probably not sufficient it's probably not all the work there are likely other mm -hmm. ways of of defining a rest api endpoint mm -hmm. yeah I mean, yeah, that maybe Oleg is going to tell us in maybe a short tutorial, what are the possible ways to, um, how Jenkins understanding, is it a REST API? Right. Mm. Yeah, so so does, is that enough to help you continue, Sagar, or should we, or do you have other questions you'd like to ask? That um, we yeah, um, just last one. Um, if I, okay, uh, so for now, if I just continue with who am I and, um, started with exported beans. So I have to just look into the source code, right? Um, to understand and where to put that source code in order to extract that endpoint and that I have to write. Um, that's, that's what I was assuming. My assumption was that, that the, the source code has some way of documenting itself. So for instance, here, this is, this is the Java doc for mm -hmm. the, this, this comment right yeah. here is the Java doc for who am I? And then I don't see any other Java doc. So that, yeah, so that's the total Java doc. And then the other things that are here are the at exported annotation mm -hmm. that tells us this is probably giving us a, an API endpoint that is for the name and this is anonymous and is authenticated here. Let's, are you okay if I check that? I think, I think this would be, this might be helpful to check. Let's see yeah. if I do slash API on the end of that and then look at the JSON API. It says, yes, so here's an anonymous, mm -hmm. authenticated and name. So there, there's, the, there's the representation name for, for the get name at mm -hmm. exported annotation. And there's the one for authenticated. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so that I think what we saw see there is who am I slash API in the UI maps to the, the name field is this, the authenticated mm -hmm. is this, the anonymous is this. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, so and here's here's an example of one. Literally of session ID with same security. Oh. So it was probably exported at one point and is not exported any longer. And if we look at that, it's definitely not in the output. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Though I don't know what is session ID, but it seems little bit, um, yeah, uh, related security. So that's why maybe they remove. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I certainly, we, if we wanted to know why this was removed, there, there are marvelous tools like this one that blame this that will tell us why it was removed, oh. when it was removed, and we could read the list. So, but but for the REST API, you don't need mm -hmm. you don't need to know oh, why it was okay. removed. You're just okay. that if you were feeling curiosity or thought thought you should become an archaeologist mm -hmm. instead of a programmer, then Okay, yeah, oh, makes sense. And I was thinking, um, okay, um, I believe um, this who am I class is being maybe processed by Stapler and then he's doing some magic behind the scene and just showing the output on the screen. I, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. you're, you're, on, you're on the right track. And I have to, I mean, um, glue my code somewhere um, where the Stapler code is doing the processing and try to, I mean, from that and pr process that same class to extract the um, endpoints, maybe um, I need. I just need to check where this who am I call is um, calling I, in the and Jenkins source code, and maybe um, then I have to maybe a console log some um, maybe log some endpoints. I, I mean control clicking on control and just um, clicking on this class name, and it will show me all the places where it is using, and just seeing where how it. That, 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 that you certainly could, that seems like, I mean, for the REST API specification generator, 
I would think you you probably don't even care who this thing calls, right? You don't oh, care okay. because because for the REST API specification, in terms of the specification, there is a there is a, a REST API endpoint. Let's go back here. So there's a REST API endpoint that looks like this or something like that, right? It looks like Jenkins URL slash who am I slash API. And, and then there are arguments that that thing takes like, mm -hmm. like this, um, well, here we can see the examples that this talks about are things where we can say, should it take a certain names of jobs or should it do a certain depth? There are the, those kinds of arguments. Mm -hmm. And then there are additionally the arguments that that may be passed to the to the function that's answering or to the method that's answering the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so back to I I don't I don't know that you need to look at who's who this is calling. It's calling somebody, but the fact that this is exported and that there's a get name means that the REST API specification should say, yes, this thing returns a a, 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 a name, a, a field with name in it and the value of name and a field authenticated and the value of authenticated in it. Yeah. And, I was, and, hmm. go ahead. Yeah. And, and the parameters is being that we entered is being again handled by Stapler. And yeah. Hmm. So, um, so eventually, um, I mean, you know, so I, we, so in order to extract endpoints where I can put my source code, I mean, to co just, I mean, for the exploration to where I, I just, I can actually log some of the endpoints in that. Yeah. Um, I was just you know, thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so, okay. So I think what you're describing is how do you detect more endpoints? Is that, is that what, how do you discover yeah. more of those endpoints? Yeah. Um, it, okay. So I know, I mean, I, in this file that contains exported bean and some exported annotations, that is, that data is going to be output on the screen. But um, so our main goal um, is to um, make, to um, show a documentation to a user, a beautiful documentation, which is being generated by again, um, Swagger and, uh, for that, we need open API specification. Before that, even we have to extract REST API endpoint. So, in order to extend uh, extract that endpoint, where I have to, I mean, I, should I have to? I mean, can, can you give me any helpful, I mean, tutorial or an uh, just like previously, like I made a plugin that was a great tutorial. I just made a scratch mm -hmm. plugin. So, if I put this code, that menu is being created. So, I mean, where I can so. So in order to make this thing happen, so where I can, I mean, put create files and put, I mean. So, so maybe what you're asking is how will the REST API specification generator be invoked by someone who wants to generate the specification? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah. okay. So, so, and that I think, that I think is, I think the REST API specification generator should be an external program that that is separate from Jenkins, but reads the Jenkins mm -hmm. source code. So we've got we've got something similar that we do with a thing called the pipeline steps documentation generator, where mm -hmm. the pipeline steps documentation generator does what it does is it asks for the list. I think it asks for the list of all plugins, and then reads mm -hmm. those plugins, looking for any of them that implement a pipeline step. And when it finds a pipeline step implementation inside one of those plugins, it goes, it reads inside that plugin source code to find the documentation that is related to that pipeline step. So it's a separate program that we run independent of Jenkins. So, and, it, oh. and it, it, it's separate so that we can run it and, and show and extract the data and then use that on a website. And I think this open, this REST API specification generator would be the same thing that we would mm. ultimately, you would create a program that is a separate program. And that separate program would read the Jenkins source code, read the mm -hmm. plugin source code, 
and decide, oh, here, I've discovered these REST APIs. Generate the definition of those APIs, the, the documentation mm -hmm. for those APIs, and write that somewhere that we can mm -hmm. then feed to open API or to, to the Swagger display utilities. Mm, yeah, that makes sense, I believe. Um, so, I mean, from now, I guess it seems I have to maybe explore maybe about pipeline step um, like documentation. I mean, how maybe it is working. Right, that, that might be a good, that's probably a good, that's a good place to see how does, how did someone else do the discovery of, of of information from inside Jenkins plugin source code. Yeah, because pipelines, 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 steps. Pipe, Step. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering the exact name, but let me find it because I was just hmm. working with it with the docs doc sig because it was it. Okay, here we go. I'll, there it is. And just a minute. So it's. it's Mm -hmm. Is that generator is also is is I mean, um, made by made by uh, Christine. I mean, I mean, is it? Yes, that's the one that Kristen Whetstone oh. made. Yes, yeah. Oh, so, okay. so I, I am impressed. How do you know Kristen Whetstone's name in that context? That's very good. I mean, I, I did some research. Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I'm, I while I was exploring, I just I, I get different links. I'm just reading all that. I'm yeah, that's yeah. I'm making notes and yeah, that's it. Yeah, so the so here I'll paste into the chat. Here's the, the GitHub repository for the pipeline steps steps doc generator. Oh, okay. Oh, oh so that's oh and uh, and what is this? I mean, maybe um Jenkins infra is is it the like external programs? Yeah, so so Jenkins Jenkins dash infra is the GitHub organization where the Jenkins project keeps its public infrastructure. And so, so that's where Kara and I and others do maintenance work to, to improve the Jenkins.io website or to fix the update center or to capture ratings of new releases or to publish, publish change logs, all sorts of things like that. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, so it's completely a external program, right? Um, it is. Yes, it is an entirely external program. It's mm -hmm. you now now it's it's written in Java, and I suspect mm -hmm. that it would be good to write it in Java because that way you get the benefit of using Java to do the the looking inside of class files if you need to. If you need to do Java bytecode manipulation for whatever reason having it written in Java is a lot better than choosing to write it in Go or Python or something else. So, so I, yeah, I, I love Java. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and when the Christian made this plugin, I mean, is there is anything that she read it before? I mean, which I can like, there is a um, documentation on how to create plugin. Um, so the readme in this plugin, this pipeline plugin doc generator, is a is is has some good outline of hey this is how you use this thing and when you use it this is what happens. The other is that there are there are at the moment in the doc sig people who are actually working on pipeline step generator to be sure they understand it. So if you have a question about that one specifically, go to the Gitter channel for the pipe for the doc sig and I will paste that into the chat here as well. Uh, if you have now, again, the this pipeline step stock generator is not the REST API generator, but it's still a generator that uses Jenkins source code and generates an output. And that this pipeline step generator is that when we have a different task and we chain them and it will show something a graph. Is it that is it that it is generating? Uh, oh, here, uh, actually, let me show you what it's generating, if that's okay. Oh, that, okay. that makes it makes it sort of real for us, right? So I'm gonna, yeah. so here is the Jenkins documentation site. And uh, if I look at Jenkins pipeline in the Jenkins documentation site, down here at the bottom left is this pipeline steps reference. So when I click that, it brings me to this huge page listing all of the pipeline steps and 
here's a plugin that that I that's familiar to me, the Git plugin, and it has one step that it provides. That step is called Git. Okay, I hope I did not cause your eardrums to explode. Forgive my sneeze. <laughs> All right. So this Git step is this that all the text that you see here has been extracted from the git plugins source code so if i take okay. that that text let's take this phrase preferred scm checkout method if i look for it here we should find that in this code and here it is so in this particular example, that this documentation, the steps generator extracted it from this file. And, and so I don't know that that helps you at all with, with the REST API generation task, but, but it, the, the source code, the, the steps generator, you discovered that there is a plugin, that's the Git plugin, discovered the source code for the Git plugin, searched the source code for the Git plugin, and found this page that it could then embed in its output. And that's, that's so that, that gives a hint of what the pipeline docs step generator, the pipeline steps doc generator is doing is it's search all the plugins, find the source code for each of those plugins, from that source code, extract relevant documentation, collect it into did files on the disk, and ready be ready to publish to some final location. In the case of this final location, it's Jenkins.io. Oh, okay. So um, this is that it is generated by pipelines. Um, the output which is generated by pipeline step document step documentation generator. Yes, right. This, this page that you're seeing here is generated by the pipeline steps. And if, if you wanted to see the what actually generated it, that's generated by ci.jenkins.io. If we go here, there is a job that runs periodically that generates, where it is, there it is. Here is the job that runs periodically that, gen, that actually publishes the, its results and Jenkins.io uses it. So ultimately, your REST API, the REST API specification generator would someday be run in a CI.Jenkins.io job to do exactly this. It would do the, the reading of source code, writing of documentation files. Oh, okay. And yeah, and that entire documentation generator is running while runtime or it is all pre-processed? Uh, it's so it's it's doing if I remember correctly it's generating its ultimate output is static pages that are then used in the Jenkins.io site we don't want we don't want the Jenkins.io site this thing to be anything but static pages and so it I believe it the steps generator creates static pages or ultimately creates static pages that are displayed here as static web pages Oh, I see. Did, did, was, was that your question or did I misunderstand your question? Um, um, currently, even I don't know much about that. I mean, I get a little glimpse about um, pipeline step documentation generator. Maybe I have, I will look into it for this week. Um, and um, then maybe, um, maybe if I have questions, I will further on for next week. I mean, um, it's it's better to um, explore it. I mean, we've, yeah, just yeah. I mean, hmm. okay, yeah, and that that sounds good too. That's that's great. The the, the for me the, the the concept that pipeline steps doc generator is providing is <clears throat> an external program that we that somebody calls you from a development environment or Jenkins from a CI environment that reads the Jenkins core source code and the list of Jenkins plugins, and then uses that information to extract 
use some useful content, pipeline documentation or REST API documentation, writes it to a location that then it can be used to publish to users. Uh, why we are naming it pipeline step documentation? I mean. Oh, because, because it's describing the steps of a pipe of that are available in the Jenkins pipeline. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, can you please repeat that? Sorry. Sure, oh. sure. It's it, it, it. This particular tool is named pipeline steps documentation generator because it's describing the the steps which can be used in a Jenkins pipeline domain specific language. So so maybe let me show you quickly what what I mean by that and and hopefully that that will be that it will be a little clearer with this picture. So if we look at let's take out oh, here let's take we're going to take a, an example that is comfortable for me. The git plugin. So oh no that won't work. That's not nearly straightforward enough because it uses all sorts of fancy. Sorry, let's use something very simple like this. We're going to pick one of the bugs that I've checked. So if we look at this and if I do a click here mm -hmm. and no, nope, not blue ocean. That was not what I wanted. I click replay. This shows me the Jenkins pipeline definition that this job will run. And, and so what you're seeing here is this is a Jenkins pipeline. And this Jenkins pipeline uses, is, uses a domain specific language that is derived from Groovy and and it says okay here we're going to on a node we're going to create a pipeline stage named checkout in that we're going to execute the step checkout and this step checkout would be one of the steps that the step generator documents we're going oh. now oh. oh i see i mean for writing this language um what are the things that we need to know before writing this that's all been I mean, um, for a bunch of, I mean, heap, um, just the accurate information is being generated by pipeline step back yeah. Right. That makes sense now. Right, yes, you, you understood perfectly. That was exactly right. It's, it's okay, this mm -hmm. is what, which, which things can be called in this context. And so now if I, if I click, if I remember right, if I go back here, there is this, handy little tool, this thing called pipeline syntax that actually helps me generate valid syntax. And so, for example, you remember we, we looked at that git step. Here's the git step and it says, uh, none of this is particularly relevant to the um, to, to your project other than being aware that this exists. Mm -hmm. so, so here's this tool that says, and let's say special branch. Oh, no, 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 because Cara's here and she lives in, in, in the UK. We use MI6, of course. All right. Okay, so that just generated the uh, the the pipeline syntax if I wanted to use this. Now, you, you don't care about this for, for the REST API generation, but being aware that this exists won't do you any harm. It's, this is a, kind, a, a tool that is very helpful for people who are writing pipelines. Uh, I see, I mean, this whole configuration has been written in this one line, is it? Yeah, uh, exactly. All of this, all of this, all of the answers like to this GUI, is expressed yeah, yes, as yeah. code in that. You got yeah. it exactly right. And this is being done by, um, um, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, wait. Yeah, so again, this, this, mm -hmm. this, is, this is not, this, this piece is actually not related to the REST API. And so, so <laughs> I, I only show it to you so you know why Pipeline, what mm -hmm. pipeline step generator is doing it this has yeah. this has no direct relationship to the rest api yeah 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 
Uh, I got it. Yeah, got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So I will look into the pipelines doc documentation. So how it is working. So that maybe that could be now I have idea because last time. Um, when Oleg said to me, discover what is code coverage plugin, even I don't know first of what is code coverage, then one, one day later I came to know, oh, it is just a testing practice, which is just showing a measure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, well, and, and so exploring the code coverage plugin is interesting, but, but we, we failed, we had failed to give you the, the, the general framework for, Hey, this is an external program and it needs to read mm -hmm. from Jenkins core and read from Jenkins mm -hmm. plugins. And, and you may find the pipeline steps doc generator closer to the final structure of the program you, you would need to create than, than just exploring code coverage plugin. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, on 13, then you are, you also written in that in the short notes. I mean, for more, I'm um, explore the pipeline step documentation generator. Also. Ah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Well, so again, you're, you're seeing my poor bias that, that, that thank you very much for working with us. This is great. Yeah. Uh, my pleasure. Um, yeah, that, that for today. I mean, for, from my side, yeah, no, yeah. All right. So Cara, I think you, we had, you had some PRs that were that needed discussion as well. Do we, do we have time to do the PR reviews? Do we need to call it a done for today? It, it is the end of our meeting time. Um, and maybe for the PR reviews, this is something that I just can discuss with you, Mark. Like I, we can we can hop on a quick link or something. I don't think we need to take that last time. <laughs> okay. Um, good. Great. That so, is, that is um, all I have mm -hmm. for this meeting. Yeah. Uh, any other mm -hmm. questions, Saga? Uh, no. Uh, so should I um, text? Um, Oleg on Gator, I mean, or is it, is it, or, or just prepare yes. for one week? Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, Actually, I will then. You are certainly welcome to, it, it's probably a good thing to ask Oleg, hey, Oleg, I have some questions. Could, could we have you attend next Google Summer of Code mm -hmm. office hours? That way you've got a week to prepare and he's mm -hmm. got a week to get it onto his calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, sounds Excellent. good. All right, thanks, Sagar. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you thanks, all. Mark, for taking my even dumb questions. Oh, those those no, are those very are, good. Those are brilliant questions, and thank you very much for asking them. We are delighted that you're asking questions, and it's and and thank you for your patience with my giving inadequate explanations or imperfect and flawed explanations. That's wonderful. We'll we'll talk to you in a week, Sagar, and I look forward to more questions. Yeah, just um. Just um, please just um, post this on YouTube. I will I will eager to watch it again. Great and and yes, it, so it'll be about probably two or three hours. It takes about an hour or two to process it before we can post. Yeah, it. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. See ya.